ETOS to this second video um, in regards to uh, project networks. In this, I'm going to talk about dummy activities, which are essential in some cases. Um, they are rare cases, but nevertheless, we need to be able to tackle them should one come up. Now, they have come up in exams before um, and in SACs as well. So I guess it's one of those things that uh, we need to be prepared for because it is a little bit more challenging and we, uh, we want to be challenged in this subject and we will be challenged in this subject. So dummy activities, um, the main reason that we want to do it is sometimes there is an issue with our predecessors. So I'll get to that in a second. First of all, a dummy activity is actually invented. So it's not an activity that's happening. It's not a real activity. The reason we have to put it in is to make our network work. It needs to means our digraph um, for it to actually represent the predecessors uh, appropriately or accurately, we might need to insert it into the network. Um, we will use a dashed line for a dummy activity. So that just shows the reader of the network that it is a dummy, that it's invented and that it's not actually happening. Uh, the thing is, because it's not happening, it won't have a duration or it'll have a duration of zero. So that will be more important once we start to use those durations. Um, at this point, we're just drawing them. So we don't need to worry about that just yet, but so you know for the future, it will have a zero duration. It does need to have a direction like every other edge that you draw in your digraph. Um, one of the reasons you might see dummy activities is to avoid multiple edges because we don't like multiple edges in an activity network. Um, we, we like our paths to be very clear, our separate paths to be very, very clear. So what we want to do is make sure that if you do have a multiple edge, just like this one here, that we um, insert what we call a dummy. And what you'll see is this just separates and creates an, another vertex and it separates A and B from uh, this different, uh, a different pair of vertices. So if, if you've got the same pair of vertices that you're connecting, you are a multiple edge. And as you can see by inserting this activity here the, with the dotted line, meaning it's invented, it separates A and B. So it creates, a, it removes, I should say, that multiple edge. That's actually not as important though as the next case. I want to spend time discussing this because this is why we absolutely have to understand uh, why a dummy activity, or this is why a dummy activity is vital. So if you have a look at this very small activity um, predecessor table, I should say, you'll see that we've got uh, this situation. So this is what I want to focus on. C and D both need A to be done. So they share A as a predecessor. However, you'll see that D requires B to be done, C does not. So C and D share A as a predecessor, but not B. Why is this an issue? If I was to draw that, when I'm drawing my activity network, it's likely I might do this. I'll have A and B meeting together. And over here, I'll have C coming from A and B. And because A and B are finishing at the same spot to allow C to be, to allow them to be predecessors of C, D will also be drawn from the same position. Now the issue with that is as you can see, if we look at D, that is now drawn correctly. A and B are coming to, to be predecessors of D, but C over here only needs A to be done. So C only needs this one. It doesn't want that one there. B is not a predecessor of C. So this activity network here is wrong. It doesn't actually accurately represent what's going on in the predecessor table. So here's what we do. If you have two activities that share a predecessor, but something is not in common, so generally if they share predecessors, it's not an issue. Where it's an issue is it when there is something that's not common. And in this case, the B is not common. What you want to do is you want to keep C and D separate. Don't put them on the same vertex. Don't have them starting from the same place. 
The reason we can't have that is B, we do not want that to touch C. We don't want it to end where C starts. It's not a predecessor. So as you can see, we've got A going to C. We've got B going to D as we need. However, we need D also to have A as a, as a predecessor. So that's where the dummy comes in. If we invent this little activity, it means that we can connect, essentially connect A to D whilst separating B from C. So this is the correct diagram for that situation that we had above. The one on the left was incorrect. Sometimes you will be, you will come across networks where this is the case, where it's necessary to insert a dummy. So in summary, a dummy activity will be required and where it goes is from the end of each shared immediate predecessor. So if we have a look up here, see how it was A that was shared? C and D both shared A. So that means the dummy is going to go from A and it's going to go to the start of the activity that has the additional predecessor. D was the one that had the additional one, it had B. So it's going to go from the end of A to the start of D. This can be a little challenging to draw, I'll give you that. It will take practice. I'm going to show you with this one here what I would do as I'm drawing it. Okay, so we need a start vertex. So let's go, we've got A, B and C that are all coming from the start vertex. A, B and C. So these three are done. Now, oh, before I move on, sometimes it's really obvious, or I like to have a look at the predecessor table to know that I do need a predecessor. And what you're looking for is any um, common predecessors. So you see, these two are common, but that doesn't matter because there's nothing um, that's not common. Um, down here, you'll see, ah, here we go. That's where I'm going to fall into trouble when I'm drawing because as you can see, E and F both need H. I'm sorry, H needs E and F, I should say. G needs E and F as well, but also C. H does not need C. So we need to make sure G and H these two here, we need to make sure that they're separated. We need to make sure that they're not going to be coming from the same spot. All right, so let's have a look. We've done A, B, and C. D needs A, so I'll finish A there, and I'll just draw D in here for now. E needs A as well, so I might just put E down this way for now. F needs B, so We'll finish B there, and we need F. Okay. Now G. G needs E, F, and C. But I know that H, I can't have C going up there because H can't have C as a predecessor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw H first. I'm going to draw the one that doesn't need the additional activity. If I put it there, then what I've got is E and F coming to be predecessors for H, and that works. So I'll just tick off H. I've done that one. The issue, of course, now is G. Yes, yes. G needs C, and it needs E and F. So if I just bring C around a little bit. So here, so G needs C, we've got that there, but it also needs E and F. So to make sure E and F go to G now, I insert the dummy. So it's dotted, it has an arrow, and I'm going to call it D. One. I can't call it D because there's already a D, but you can call it D1, meaning dummy one. All right, so I've got G and I've got H. Um, I needs D and H. So D's up there. I'm just going to bring it down here. So D comes down here, D and H. So that's going to be I coming from there. 
And that's all. That means that G is not a predecessor for anything, which I can see it's not in that column. That means that it goes to the finish. There we go. And there's our completed network. So the key thing was that H could not start where C finished. So I actually needed to keep H and G separate. So these two here, you separate G and H because of this issue here. C was not common. Go through and just make sure that you've got an arrow on every edge and then add the durations to your network and it is complete. Once you've watched this video, you can have a go at drawing some of these networks that require dummies. Um, again, make sure you just have a grey lead with you. You will make mistakes with it. You will draw them in the, in the, in the wrong spot. You will see that I've done that as I've drawn this. You just need to erase and fix it. So you just need to erase and say move things around or extend the edge, whatever you need to do. Just use a pencil, uh, write fairly lightly as well so that you can rub things out. Now, I'll set some of these for you. Don't worry, I've got loads of them that you can practice with. There is really no, there's practically no end to the number that you can practice with. But also keep in mind that in terms of assessment, you're not going to be given very, very large networks to draw. Okay, it is still very important though that you know how to insert a, a missing edge or to perhaps draw some of these smaller sized networks. Thank you very much for watching.